welcome. Human activity has had a more direct effect on global warming than previously thought. That's the verdict of a report backed by at least 100 countries to be launched in Paris on Friday. The research, the work of around 2,500 scientists, warns of a three-degree warming of the planet. That means, they say, more droughts, more heat waves, and rising sea levels. In a gesture to mark the report, lights were briefly put out across Europe. In Spain, lights went out at Seville Cathedral and the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. And the Colosseum in Rome was also plunged into darkness. One of the world's greatest landmarks, and for a few moments tonight, in a signal of the need for action on climate change, it was plunged into darkness. Nearby at a UN building, long, difficult negotiations over the fine print of the risks of global warming. The scientists and officials are meeting here for the culmination of years of effort to produce a definitive statement on how our planet is heating up. And now we've learned of their key conclusion. Here in this first sight of the latest computer predictions, a graphic view of tonight's international consensus, that we're heading for a rise in average global temperatures by the end of the century of three degrees centigrade. The red areas are the hottest, and that our emissions of greenhouse gases are very likely to be behind the warming so far. If we're going to reach three degrees, that means absolutely disastrous consequences um, for us. It means disastrous consequences for the most vulnerable, for the, mo the, for, for the most affected communities around the world. Species loss and environmental refugees like we've never seen before. A three degree rise would accelerate the melting of the polar ice caps and raise the level of the sea, threatening many of the world's coastal cities. It would trigger a large scale drought and threatened food supplies for millions. A three degree rise is well inside what's considered the danger zone of global warming. Well, we're now joined by our correspondent, David Shukman, who is in Paris for this conference. David, I thought the lights on the Eiffel Tower were supposed to be off. I can see that they're still on behind you. Well, you're quite right. They were turned off briefly in a signal to call for the world to take action on climate change, really a, a gesture from the authorities here in Paris. But it is interesting how seriously climate change is now being taken, certainly on this side of the Atlantic. And here indeed in Paris, we've got hundreds of leading scientists, specialists in climate change and atmospheric physics, a whole range of different sciences, meeting with officials from more than 100 different governments to go through this draft, line by line, 14 pages, to try and establish a consensus, the best possible estimate of where we're heading with climate change. And probably the key headline that we've learned so far from talking to people who've been in the meeting is that the world, they reckon, is heading for a rise of global average temperatures of three degrees centigrade. Doesn't sound much, but we know from other studies that a three degree centigrade rise would trigger all kinds of pretty catastrophic changes. Melting of the polar ice sheets, the rising of the world sea levels, drought in key areas of Africa causing famine and devastation. A whole host of problems unless we can take action. So the language in this report, correct me if I'm wrong, is more dramatic than anything we've heard so far. But are the actions equally dramatic or drastic that they're suggesting? Well, everything is being ratcheted up. And that is a result of the fact that the science is becoming stronger. When concerns about global warming kicked off in the late 80s, there were some people around quite genuinely saying, we just don't know enough about how the climate, especially the atmosphere, behaves. Well, in the 15 or 20 years since then, we've had satellite reconnaissance, all kinds of monitoring systems have been set up in the Antarctic, in the Arctic, in the Amazon rainforest. There's an awful lot more data for the scientists to get their teeth into. And on top of that, the computer modeling, these simulations of the future climate have become a lot more accurate. The scientists, certainly in Britain and Germany and America, have run their climate predictions backwards to see how they match past records of climate. And they're quite satisfied that they're fairly accurate, which is why this prediction of a three degree rise in global temperatures here, they believe, and it is the consensus endorsed by so many governments now, that that, that belief in an accurate prediction is now reliable, and that really is a key spur to action. David Schuchman there in Paris.
reviews. Soaring global temperatures, droughts and heat waves. The bleakest warning yet from science about the threat to our planet. Now then, as 2,000 scientists will confirm in Paris tomorrow, the damage to the climate from man-made activities will one day have extreme impacts on our lives as the Earth continues to heat up, thanks to emissions from our homes, our cars and our factories. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is expected to predict a substantial rise in sea levels. It's already putting millions of people in low-lying areas at risk, as our environment analyst Roger Harabin now reports. The mighty sea, expanding slowly as the planet warms. Sea levels rising two millimeters a year, a tiny amount, but it adds up year on year. So how far do the scientists meeting in Paris think the sea will rise this century? Well, in their previous report, they suggested a maximum of 88 centimeters. They're thinking now about downgrading that to around 60 centimeters maximum with their new information. But some scientists warn it could even be as high as 1.5 meters. So why the uncertainty? We know the sources of sea level rise. The, the oceans expand as they warm and ice melts into them. But the biggest remaining uncertainty is what's going to happen in West Antarctica, where that huge ice sheet is sitting on rock below sea level. We've never seen an ice sheet like that respond to climate before. We're just going to have to wait and see what the planet does. Let's look at Greenland, for instance. The ice sheet there is two miles thick in places. Scientists used to be confident it had lasted a thousand years. Now they're not quite so sure. And this is what's worrying them. It used to be assumed that with the sun, the ice sheet would slowly melt from the top. But now scientists have found meltwater can trickle into a crevasse, run down to the bottom, lubricate a big chunk of ice to crash into the sea. There's uncertainty too with the giant West Antarctic ice shelf. It's being nibbled away from beneath as the sea warms. Scientists believe it'll stay stable, but if chunks of it go into the sea, there'll be a sudden increase in sea level. Some places are vulnerable to even a tiny rise in sea level. This is Goramara Island off the east coast of India. The water here is eating at the tree roots and the soil. Thousands of people have fled as refugees. But the island still has a thriving school. They're even extending it. Scientists, though, warn this place might not last more than 20 years before it goes under the waves. I would say the outlook is quite grim, and people living in that area really have to be worried about uh, being able to continue to live there. We'll know tomorrow what the experts project for vulnerable islands like these. It'll be our grandchildren who'll tell if they're right. Roger Harabin, BBC News.